just a normal day in your right. I'm alright. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hello, you rascals. I hope you're doing well. And it's about to get even better. Because today, you will learn how to create this aimbot with FOV. It will aim at entities who enter this FOV circle of death. We can also change the size of this circle through ImGUI and its colors. It's truly a masterpiece of a feature. This video builds upon the two previous CS2 aimbot tutorials, so you will need to have that code ready. Perhaps subscribe, like, or write a comment. I would love to hear the next feature you want me to cover. You can also find the Discord server in the description. But remember, comply with the terms of service for the game you're coding hacks on. Many games permit it and it's essential to respect their guidelines. All Sweat C Sharp tutorials are designed with multiplayer disabled and this tutorial will precisely demonstrate how to achieve that. Now enjoy this tutorial. Alright, so welcome to the showcase of the video. If we open the project that you would have at the end of this tutorial, it looks like this. So it's very similar to the aimbot head tutorial, but we do have new features. So we will add the FOV and uh, all of that stuff. So we only aim within a specified circle. But enough of that, let's try it in game. So before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam under the game Counter-Strike 2. We will right click on the properties. We will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, we can get banned otherwise. Inside the main menu, you can check that this is enabled by going into matchmaking, checking a map, and this window will come up saying that you have launched the game in Dash Insecure. Otherwise, do not run any applications that could get you banned. Here you can now instead go into practice and play with bots like this. So, if we try it in game, we can just hit the play button, input FOV, and you should see the entities updating, and you should also see a circle in the middle of the screen with the circle color that can be changed. Let's pick this color, and you can change the pixel FOV dynamically so something large something in the middle or something small but if we do now hold our aimbot key aim towards the enemy look at the circle if he gets inside you can see that we do aim at that entity you can see as soon as it passes through the circle it will do the aimbot function just like before. Wow. Truly amazing. Wow, wow, wow. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next one. So, 
The first thing we will do is to open our aimbot head tutorial project because there is so much reusable code here and we don't want to reinvent the wheel. So we will open it, then start by going into the render class to add some FOV options. We will start by adding some new variables. So we will add a vector 2 for the screen size. Remember, use your own screen size here, not mine. Then we have the FOV, which will be in pixels and the data type float. After that, we have a vector 4 for the circle color. So RGB, then A or alpha. We will set the default to be white. Now that we have our variables, we can start to create some GUI elements. We will start by adding a slider float with the title pixel FOV and refer to our FOV variable, then have the max values 10 and 300. This way we can change the FOV dynamically via uh, this slider. Then we want to be able to change the circle color. So we will create an if statement with the imgui.collapsing imgui header and FOV circle color. Here we will create a new imgui.color picker with our referred circle color variable. Now that we have our GUI options, we will want to draw this circle. You will need to draw this overlay for a new window that's on top of the screen, which I've done multiple times, so I will just copy paste, but you can follow and write this off. Now, when we have the new overlay window, we can get the draw list pointer from imgui.getDrawList. When we have the draw list, we can finally add a circle with a vector 2 position, which would be the middle of the screen, the screen size divided by 2, then the FOV variable to set the radius, and finally our circle color, but converted to a U32 or a UINT. And now we're done with the graphical part. We will go into our entity class and add the attribute head 2 d which would represent 2D coordinates of the entity's head on our screen. Then, because our aimbot head tutorial is quite old, maybe a couple of weeks old, we will have to update the offset. So, you will have to do this when the game updates, but thankfully, these offsets.cs usually update less often than the client.dll.cs. So, I know for a fact that the client.dll.cs offsets haven't updated, so I will just change the new offsets.cs. So we will update the view angles, the local player pawn, and the entity list offset, then add this new offset, dv view matrix. But like always, you will have to check these offsets manually in the future, because you can't just copy this and expect it to work. Things change, they are dynamic. Then, once we have updated the offsets, we can go into the calculate class and add our alter screen function. But I forgot to add the view matrix class, so we will have to do that first, real quick. So we don't have a view matrix class, so we will create it quickly, then add some floats for each of the float values. So M11 to M44. Now that we have the view matrix structure or class, we can finally create our world to screen function. I will copy and paste it because I've done it a million times, showed it. You can copy from here. After that, we go back to the program.cs and get some 2D info. So we get our view matrix, but we will need to read the view matrix first. Now, because we have a read function in this web library that reads these matrices. We 
could have used it, but we have this view matrix offset or object that we performed the calculations on. So we will create a new function, read matrix, and simply convert the different floats to their corresponding matrix value. So ML11 becomes matrix position one. So and finally we can continue our main code. So we will create our view matrix with the read matrix method using the view matrix offset. Then we will get the head 2D of our entity with our wall to screen function. So we use the current view matrix, then the entity's head position 3D, then the width and height of the screen, which would be the screen size dimensions. But because we don't have the screen size variable directly available, we will get it from the renderer class, then calculate the screen size afterwards. So our will to screen function takes two integers, so we will quickly convert the screen size vector into x and y coordinates. And once we have the 2D location of the head, we can calculate the pixel distance uh, between the head and our crosser but we will need a new variable in the entity to store that pixel distance. So to calculate the pixel distance, we will use the vector2.distance function. We will need two vectors, first one being head 2D of the entity, then a new vector, which we will get the middle of the screen with the screen size dot x divided by two and the screen size dot y divided by two. Now that we have the pixel distance as a variable of the entity, we can sort it by none other than the pixel distance. Then once we have sorted them by the pixel distance, we will just check that our entity is within the FOV circle. So we will check the first entity in the entities list from here and just copy paste whatever we did before calculating the angles. That doesn't change. And now that we're done with all of these things, we can change this thread of sleep, but whatever, we can try it out in game. So before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam under the game Counter-Strike 2. We will right click on the properties. We will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, we can get banned otherwise. All right, so if we now run it, you should, if everything is correct, see the updated head coordinates of these entities that we have chosen. And our window should now include a pixel FOV and a FOV circle color. So if we go in game, we can see that there is our circle, we can change the color to whatever we want, we can change the pixel FOV to the minimum or the maximum. And now we should be able, when we hold the aimbot key, only aim when enemies come inside of this FOV. Would you look at that? Wow. That's pretty cool. Let's uh, have it to the max. This isn't really practical, but it comes inside, it shoots. Let's set it to something low. Wow, that's really low or small. So if you have too small, it might actually not connect because it doesn't update fast enough for whatever reason. 
so maybe ha have it a bit higher whatever you want should be all right thank you guys for watching i'll see you in the next video